morning Philippines. Good afternoon, good evening, America. We are week, weekly weekend broadcast of Open Forum. Join us in this two hours for questions and answers. When the song is the place, you may greet your friends. You may take also the time out to invite the uh, like, uh, share this to join groups. You may also suggest your favorite song. We are also live in Kubuyo and Nansinwis. Please take this time to invite, uh, to share the broadcast with Kubuyo and Nansinwis. Okay, God bless that for the song. Uh, let's close this other song. Please close this other song for me. Welcome to welcome to part two of the. Academy of Science. Can you help out? I cannot press it here. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. 
Okay, I'm gonna play. Uh, we um, what was the song I said a while ago? We will rise or I will rise. Okay, I forgot. <laughs> we will rise. I will rise. I will rise again. Now, um, so prepare your questions and uh, please choose among yourselves who will. Uh, Um, I cannot find the song anymore. I will rise again. Anyway, maybe I can play it later. I can look for it later. Okay, I cannot see the song anyway. So let's have some opening prayer before we begin. And uh, I call on our brethren to ready. Uh, their questions, their pictures, anyone can help out in the picture. Um, but do not share your screen while you're searching for the picture. You can help search for the picture and then share it alternatively. It's all right if there are two pictures that are being shared at the same time. One just have to unshare it in the screen. So, uh, can anyone volunteer for an opening prayer? Anyone in the DevCon room? I, I can't find the... Uh, anyone in the DevCon room? Brother Albert, in English. Can anyone pray for us in English? Brother Albert, Brother Jeron. Brother Albert, Brother Jeron. Uh, no one. <laughs> I think there are a few people in DevCon room. Okay, so uh, AJ. I hope AJ. So uh, anyone from uh, Kogeo, Manalite? Can you pray for us? Can you pray for us, anyone? Volunteer, the Barjeris family. I forgot to ask, have you prepared some songs for Jerry? No. Sister Berna? Uh, JP uh, David, please. Shall we pray now? Okay, okay, please give us an opening prayer. Yes, oh God. Hallelujah. We praise you, O Lord, in this blessed morning that you have given us the time and opportunity, O Lord, to share our word. Anoint thy servant, Brother Francis Chan, who will share what about the ascension and descension of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may have, O oh Lord, the spiritual power that came from you, O oh Lord. We ask this, O oh Lord. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, uh, I call on all brethren in uh, series, share this to the members of uh, uh, Kogio End Time Series. Just click the name of the any person. Just, just type any name of the person there. And just share it randomly everywhere. And share it also to giant groups. And we are live in Kogio End Time Series. Uh, please comment the link of the messenger room. Okay. Uh, JP has commented, use the messenger link to share, to invite the foreigners in the DevCon room to ask questions. Because uh, if they ask it in Kogyo in time series, it could not be heard in DevCon room. So DevCon room would be their venue to ask questions. So there are only two people uh, viewing so they're all asleep, so no one has prepared for them to be ready. Okay, so um, uh, anyone who wish to ask questions, you may begin now about the Ascension of Christ. You may uh, show the thumbnail. Uh, show the thumbnail, Brother J.P. David. Show the thumbnail of uh, our topic. You just study in the first part of eternity. So show the thumbnail. 
share the thumbnail. You know the thumbnail, JP David? Please ask them what it is if you don't know. Debcon, uh, the thumbnail. In, in, the thumbnail is in my uh, invitation. Debcon, please share the thumbnail for the moment while they're asking their questions. So, Barjeri and others, uh, do you have any prepared questions? Barjeri, hello. Anyone who wish to ask some questions for our topic? For our topic. No one is sharing their no screen sharing right now. Screen. What, what is the topic, bro? What is the topic, bro? Ngayon. Uh, 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 now, uh, what is the topic now? Uh, the ascension of Christ and the descension of Christ in one of all this. Debcon, could you share the... No, David is not doing it as other. The thumbnail, I told him to copy the thumbnail. Eh. Please share the, the screen in the thumbnail. Uh, Debcon, JP, David, that's the thumbnail, okay. Blow it up. Okay, that's the topic today. So uh, you may ask topic uh, questions regarding that. So JP David, you should uh, be familiar with your pictures. Okay, uh, uh, anyone in the room who wish to ask questions, please do so regarding the ascension and the sin. There are many topics associated with this. The resurrection of Christ, the mediatorship, and the, our last topic, the rivers of Eden will pass through the Mount of Olives. If you have any picture of the mountain where Jesus Christ rose up, uh, th that will split in half. You can show the picture. If JP David, CJ, if you're already awake, and other young people. Uh, here um, is the first, well, Francis. Okay. Here is well, uh, one question from Sister Jemima. When will Christ descend on Mount Olives? Is there any exact date or time in the Bible mentioned about his coming or descension? You're talking about the second coming, the descension, not the ascension, right? Um, maybe uh, it's ascension and descension, what she's okay. talking about. The ascension was 40 days after his resurrection, 40 days after the Feast of the First Fruits. He was nine days short of Pentecost. That's his ascension. So there's a specific schedule. There's a specific time in the feasts of God. JP David, if you can show the feasts of God. Um, so look for the picture first before sharing your screen, okay? Then if you found the picture, Show it in your laptop, then share your screen. Don't share your screen immediately if you don't have the picture yet. Well, so, someone else, Debcon, is sharing their screen of the picture. Look for the picture while you're not sharing your screen. So that's a picture of the church ages. So uh, in the feasts of God, the feasts of God, um, the Pentecost, between Pentecost and the first fruit, within the feast of weeks, that's the time of his ascension. In the second coming of Christ, when will that be? Would it be in the feast of... It could be in any part of this feast. It could be, be in the feast of the fall feasts, or could it be in the spring feasts? Okay? So, but we're talking about the second coming. So... If you can look at the timeline of the tribulation period, so show the tribulation period. The timeline of the, uh, 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 tribulation. So when will that be? I cannot answer for now, but we can draw some types. Draw there are many types, types like many atonement. Types like atonement. Surely not. Uh, that Today we have, uh, before you reach fall, there's the Feast of the Trumpet. Any time of the time. Any time. The re our resurrection could be same as first fruit, like Christ. So it's an open question. 
Okay, so other questions, Brother Jerry? Anyone in DevCon who wish to ask question? Uh, uh, I must, I, I'm as a question, bro. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Do you explain uh, Matthew 21 hanggang 40 hanggang 41? Do you explain it? Matthew... It, it, it is the second category of Christ. So, 21 hanggang 40 hanggang 41. Uh, is it chapter 24 of Matthew? Chapter 24 of Matthew. Are you referring to Matthew Ma uh, 24 of Matthew? Matthew, 20, Matthew 21, 40 hanggang 41. Ah, okay, okay. Let's open our Bibles there. Let's read it. Join na Joanna. Barlito, your mic is on. You're talking in Tagalog. You're talking in Tagalog. Please mute them. Please mute them. March 20 and 42. March 40 and 41, bro. Oh. When the Lord therefore, the Lord therefore, okay, at least you can, okay, uh, you can show some, uh, show some uh, verse, Bible verse, verse, Bible verse, Bible verse. <laughs> or others help out. Or others help there. out. There. Uh, while they are while struggling, they are they, uh, they could please show a uh, the thumbnail. They could always be vigilant to show the thumbnail. Well. JP David is struggling. So let me read some verse while the verse is not yet on. Do not share your screen while the verse is not yet on. They can please show the thumbnail where while they are not yet. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. So. Um, so, uh, let's read. Let's open our all our Bibles. Let's, let's open our all our Bibles. Let's read. Um, let's read. Uh, Fourteen forty-one. Someone open. Someone open. 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 Speaker. Speaker. Uh, coming when, back. Uh, back. Like back. Like back. Like Their feedbacks could. Uh, could others mute their, their microphone? Okay, their feedbacks. Okay. Let me mute the others. Okay, so let me read. Okay. So let me when, when, uh, Jerry, could you mute? Maybe the feedback is coming. Uh, you just unmute if you're going to speak. Okay. okay. When the Lord therefore... When the Lord therefore... I'm reading from Matthew 21 verse 2. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do to those husbandmen? They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Okay. So okay. I think it's Brother Herod who asked this. Okay. Brother Herod who asked. The Lord of the vineyard, the Lord of the vineyard is Jesus Christ. Or God the Father in Jesus Christ in the in this second coming for reckoning. The wicked husbandmen are those who uh, use God's heritage, are being lords over God's heritage. Who are God's heritage? Who are God's vineyard? They are the people who's, who they should minister the word of God to. They should disciple. They should train in the ways of the Lord to observe all things whatsoever uh, Christ commanded them to do or God commanded them to do. And um, so the vineyard, the Lord's over God's heritage those wicked husbandmen, they are ministers who are Nicolaitan. Who, what do we mean by Nicolaitan? Nicolaitan means they are not uh, focused on the Word of God. They are not focused on open for correction in the Word of God. They have pride because of their education, their position, or large following. 
Maybe sometime in the past they were used of God. But like Cain, he wanted to change his offering. These ministers stopped being barren. These ministers were barren from the start. They were humble. But one day they stopped being barren because they might have become a mega church and they refused to be corrected. They could not be approached anymore. They could not walk in progressive light. They even restrict their followers, which are the vineyard of God, the heritage of God, God's heritage. They even restrict them from walking in further light. So that is their that is their sin. So while I'm talking about vineyard, you can look for pictures about the church or the ministry. Okay. So that is how you should function, uh, young people. So the vineyard of God, you can even Google even the verse and search for that picture. If you found that picture, then share that to the screen. So uh, God's vineyard is the church. I'm not talking of any local church or any denomination. Those believers, even if those believers are in those denominations, they belong to God. But their leaders who treat their followers like their own property in the name of protecting them from wolves. They restrict, they control, they, they forbid those people uh, permanently not to prove all things, not to hear from others. They scare them to say that uh, you will be deceived if you listen to others. So those are the wicked husbandmen. And they will be destroyed at the end when Christ comes. But what about here? It says that other husbandmen will be allowed in. Similar to John 4, 38. Um, if anyone can read for us, you they will be allowed to continue in the work of the other husbandmen. The, this, this is the 11th hour worker. The 11th hour worker are the end time. I'm, think, I'm talking about a time period. The end time ministers that will be used of God to prepare the bride, to meet the bride, to prepare the vineyard for the coming of the Lord of the vineyard. So when the Lord of the vineyard comes, the true husbandmen that are sincere, they will be the 11th hour workers. The previous workers who's, who started out earlier, which have become dynasties today. Dynasties means they are the present day churches who live in the past, who live in the past revelations. They've, they restrict their members, their mega churches. They've become major churches with uh, millions of followings, H hundreds of millions of followings. And they uh, prevent their people, their, their, the, those of their following from progressing to further light. So, but those true vineyard of God, they will be ministered by true husbandmen. So these are ministers the, these true children of God are the predestinated children that will go up in the rapture. So you can show the rapture as for illustration, J.P. David and others. So you don't have to search and uh, you don't have to share your screen while you're searching. Okay. So the rapture. So those who will go up in the rapture in the first part of the tribulation period at the end of the church age, I hope you know what you're looking for. You should have stopped. When, <laughs> so maybe you need some help. Okay, so uh, uh, they will be coming out of the denominations. So the vineyard of God is not one particular denomination. It's, yes, the vineyard of God is all churches, whatever denomination you belong to. But the many are called, but few are chosen. Those chosen few will be ministered by husbandmen that are Berean. And they will be called out. And they will be perfected as the bride. 
when they will be perfected as a bride, uh, please ask them to close your video. Um, when they will be perfected as a bride, um, when they will be perfected as the bride, then that's that they will be part of the rapture. Those that will be left behind are are ministered by wicked husbandmen because they are close-minded. Maybe they can still repent in the tribulation period. They can still repent in the tribulation period. So show the eternity to the tribulation period of eternity to eternity. Those left behind in the seven-year tribulation period can still be can still wake up from from being blinded and follow the husbandmen of follow the husbandmen of uh, um, the husbandmen of God. So that's the answer, brother Jerome. I believe that you were the one who asked this question, right, brother Jerome? Yes, bro. Yes, bro. I I'm asked a question for you. You you done sa ano tan sa sa vineyard then sa vineyard sa the Lord of the vineyard. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I already answered that, ah, a, while answered that a while ago. The Lord of the vineyard mm -hmm. is Jesus Christ. The Lord of the vineyard is Jesus Christ. God in Jesus Christ. There's a two prophecy yata. There's a two prophecy. You lost your sound. I am in series and I cannot see the... There's no picture shared. Is it delayed? Uh, okay. So... Uh, oh, did the time stop? Oh no, it stopped again. Did I lost my sound? Hello. Can I still be heard in the room? Can I still be heard in the room? Yes, yes, bro. Yes, bro. Yes, bro. Yes, bro. Oh, continue your question, brother Geron. Ah, so your question was the Lord of the Vineyard. I answered that a while ago. I'm just repeating it. The Lord of the Vineyard is Jesus Christ or um, God in Jesus Christ. We have another verse that says uh, God is the husbandman and he's the, <laughs> the vine. <laughs> That's another type. So um, here in this Matthew 21 example, God, through Christ, uh, hired laborers for their vineyard. The laborers are the ministers of God. Of course, some ministers are unfaithful. Their loyalty was been switched to denominations or some creeds or dogmas. Okay, so let's continue. Any other questions? Any other questions? Uh, can I ask a question? Yes. By the way, let me remind that uh, in series, there, I cannot see any shared screen in the series. Please check it out, uh, brethren. Mm -hmm. Okay, question, brother Sisku. Okay. Yes, I, I, I want, I want to ask if uh, the dissension of Jesus Christ or the second coming, uh, uh, are these uh, literal events or uh, spiritual or symbolic events? Let's mute the other voices. I, I hear, I'm hearing other voices. Okay, so uh, there are churches that teach a preterist version of theology. The preterist version teach that Jesus Christ has come already. Here in the end time message, I hope AJ Togonon is invited here. Uh, they follow Don Parnell. The teaching of Don Parnell, Jesus Christ has come down, have, has come down already in 1963. So maybe you can show some timeline there. In 1963, uh, you can show the church ages so that you can see. Uh, please share the screen of the church ages. 
Jesus Christ supposedly has come down during the opening of the seals. There are a, a fourth group in the end time message here in the Philippines that believe that. Don't wait for no rapture anymore because God, uh, Christ has already come in his second coming. So uh, I would say that uh, that is not true because Bible prophecy says when Jesus Christ comes back down, there will be an end of governments. The governments of this world will be destroyed. So maybe you can share the tribulation period. Of course, there's the rapture for the church. It's No one can see that. So share the rapture picture. Then go to the tribulation period of eternity to eternity. When Christ comes back down, it will be the end of this earthly governments. There will be a great earthquake. So share, show the eternity to eternity tribulation period. The, uh, how how the nation would see how how the nation will see him, because uh, the Bible say I think, I think in the revelation all all eyes will see him coming down. So are these events are literal or uh, mm -hmm. symbolical or spiritual? No, it's literal. It's literal. If can you blow up your screen on the second coming of Christ on Earth, mm -hmm. the eternity uh, picture? Please blow it up so others can see Christ on a white horse. So um, when Christ, how comes would back the, how down, would the people see? Uh, yeah, yeah. How mm -hmm. would the people uh, see? Or the nation will see uh, Jesus Christ coming down. If uh, uh, the Bible say also that uh, Jesus Christ will come down, will come down on on the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives. If, 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 okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Continue your question. If uh, Jesus Christ is still in his uh, body. I think uh, Jesus Christ only five or five ten uh, in height. Uh, nobody. Uh, if I if mm -hmm. I in the Philippines, I cannot see in I, I cannot see him in the uh, coming down uh, in the Mount of Olives because I'm in the Philippines. The Mount of Olives is not written in the Bible as being seen by all men. What men will see while he is still up there? Okay, we're. We're going to read scriptures of the Mount of, of, of Olives. And you will notice that they, uh, in the Mount of Olives, not all eyes will see the Mount of Olives. But all eyes will see him while he is still up above. And yeah, if, I'm, if I'm in the Antarctic or in the, the lower part of the globe, and uh, Jesus Christ is in the Mount of Olives, uh, coming down, coming down, uh, in Jerusalem, that is impossible to see if uh, five, ten uh, men coming down from heaven. You're right, you're right. But uh, when he comes from the heavens, every eye shall pierce him. That there will be a 24 hour earthquake. That's very terrible. Even for a few minutes, we're so afraid, but there will be a 24-hour earthquake. And the, the globe will spin. The globe will spin for 24 hours. Every eye will see. And they will not just see a the person, the physical body of Jesus Christ. They're going to see a group of angels. You can show that picture. You've been, they've been showing this picture. This group of angels among Jesus Christ, it will be a sight like UFOs, like alien yeah. uh, invasion. That's, so, what, that's what I said. Uh, if Jesus Christ is not 
uh, using any uh, spaceship or something that uh, can uh, fly so that the people will see him coming down. JP David, take this opportunity to share the, the Independence Day picture. Or who has it? Okay. The Independence Day picture, you already had that a while ago. You passed through it a while ago. JP David, the Independence Day picture, you passed through it. One of you, um, it's been shared to you a while ago. You're not studying the picture, JP David. <laughs> the, okay. If, if uh, the government of Russia okay, will see, yeah, the, the, if the government of Russia will see one of you just the, something something coming down from heaven, that uh, unusual uh, things uh, in 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 their in their mind, that will be, I think, uh, hostile or something that uh, can be cannot be trusted. So it will ignite the 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 world, or it will ignite the the war. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, one of you, could you share the eternity to eternity, the tribulation period part, or uh, if you have pictures of the war, but uh, the picture of eternity to eternity will suffice. One of you maintain the Independence Day. And one of you share the eternity to eternity. So JP David, maybe you can open uh, eternity to eternity while the others is, is go to the tribulation part. Uh, go to the uh, that's Ophiriot, <laughs> the air. Blow up, blow up the part uh, of the Armageddon. Blow it up. So this is the scenario. When Jesus Christ comes back down, the whole world will view it as a hostile force. But you don't know, while he was coming down, while he's being seen as a light in the heavens, only foolish virgin that have repented from their uh, ignorance of their, uh, um, that become wise, that are left behind, only they will understand that it was Jesus Christ coming back down. But during that time, they should have been martyred already. They would have been killed in the tribulation. So majority do not understand what they're seeing because those who, who should have known would already have been uh, martyred by the Antichrist and the governments of the world. So the rest of the unregenerate humanity is about to go to war. That's World War III. They might have even started uh, flying this, uh, sending off these missiles, their ICBMs, to annihilate each other. And Jesus Christ will intervene. While, while the nuclear warheads were flying off, and you know, we have uh, alien enthusiasts that have seen videos, I, part, I myself have seen videos, how the UFOs have uh, dismantled the warhead of some nuclear missiles. Now, in that event, you're looking at, uh, could you go up higher a little? Show Armageddon and show Christ on the horse? Uh, no, go up, go up. So Christ could be seen. Christ and Armageddon. Okay. Well, the missiles were flying off into the heavens, they will be dismantled. Mm -hmm. And the whole world, I'm talking about the military, while they're converging in Megiddo, they're converging in Jerusalem. That's said in Zechariah chapter 14. When they're converging in Jerusalem, and they see this uh, spectacle of light, if you look at Independence Day, it's like an alien invasion. Although in the movie, it looks like a round saucer, but in reality, it will be in forms of light. Mm -hmm. So they will see points of light in the heavens, and they will not understand what they are. But they've been uh, 
are groomed by this, their minds have been conditioned by this movie. Independence Day is just one of them. There are many movies that have already portrayed an alien invasion. Even respectable scientists believe that they are aliens, that one day we, there could be an alien contact. So they've been, uh, they're waiting for that day of disclosure. They're waiting for that day of showing themselves. But this time around, they will see it as hostile. There, there has been an alien contact before that was hostile. So the past that they've encountered in the Vietnam War and where else? In Russia and, uh, and somewhere else. Now, here at the end time, when Jesus Christ comes back down, when Jesus Christ comes back down, they will not see him as Jesus Christ. They will see him as an alien invasion. So those opposing forces that were about to slaughter each other, those opposing forces, they will forget their, they will forget their uh, enmity with each other. If I hope we have downloaded some video of Ronald Reagan saying in the UN, maybe you can Google that later. Or someone else can Google it while not sharing their screen. Ronald Reagan said, if an alien force comes, uh, shows up, all our differences in the world will disappear. That's what Ronald Reagan said. All our differences in the world will disappear and we will join forces together. We will become one in fighting that alien force. So you can search in Google or YouTube Ronald Reagan talking about that. So if you look at the picture of Independence Day, that is what happened in the movie. You can watch that movie, okay? If, you, if you're studying this. In yeah, the movie, the Israelites and the Arabs, the Muslims, they stop their arguments. They stop their quarrels to face the alien threat. And they work together to face the alien threat. Okay, brother Sispo, you're saying something. Yeah, but uh, in uniting uh, all nation in one purpose, is that uh, is that bad to un to to be united in one purpose? Uh, unconsciously, they they don't know that the uh, the one that coming down is Jesus Christ. Uh, the how, whole world. How, how, yeah, how the how God will uh, judge them? If they if they don't know what they're doing, uh, um, you, you get what I say. I get what you're saying. When Christ mm -hmm. said, uh, "Forgive them, for they know not what they do," they've been hostile. They will be given a chance to understand, but the military hostility—they're the ones. The Bible said they're the ones that killed the saints. The saints have been killed in the tribulation period. And God said God will give them their own blood to drink. We have murderers, criminals today. They don't know what they're doing, but still they have to be apprehended. They still have to be punished. Sometimes under the Duterte's uh, policy, if they resist, kill them. <laughs> so Romans 13, the... the the governments do not raise the uh, the sword in vain. Let me say, uh, policing and death penalty. There's nothing wrong. Now let's go to let's talk about this war. They're about to annihilate each other. If Christ did not intervene, they're about to destroy the earth with nuclear uh, radioactive uh, poison. They're about to pollute the earth with radioactive poison. So. Christ intervening them, they're still possessed by the devil to the point that they want to make war against Christ. Yes, they have united, but they are not united in with the right goal. Remember Nimrod, in the time of Nimrod, the world was united. But what did they do? They were deceived into sacrificing their babies to Baal. They yeah. give their firstborns in the fairy furnace of a cauldron. Yeah, Brother they, Francis, uh, they, they, they are only, uh, I think, 
if this will happen, they will they 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 gonna unite each other in one purpose. Uh, I think that is only a natural instinct of our of our uh, manly or uh, a human uh, instinct, not to be a territorial uh, being. If someone uh, going to uh, invade us, uh, we we gonna we gonna uh, show our natural instinct to to be you know. Uh, uh, territorial or protective to our loved ones. No, the 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 motive of the war is, I think, the the protection of their own country. In that time, in Armageddon. Yes, they've watched too many movies about alien invasion on Earth. They've been deceived by the devil. Even those movies are deceiving people, because they no longer look up to God. They don't no longer believe the Bible. They would rather believe in alien extraterrestrials than God or his angels, than in the supernatural. They don't believe in the supernatural realm, God and or the devil or his angels. They believe, if you watch those shows they're peddling now, they believe they are high-tech uh, alien civilizations. And... Uh, what did Stephen Hawking said? Uh, if a higher higher tech uh, culture meets up with a lower tech culture, what happens with the Incas, the Mayas, the uh, the South American Indians when Columbus are not Columbus, the other Spaniards arrive in their shores, their cultures were destroyed, they were plundered. So that's what the conclusion of Stephen Hawking. And that's what the scientists believe. They're all deceived. They're all deceived. So when this supposedly hostile force comes down, they will crane their ordinances to the heavens. So maybe you can show some picture of, uh, I want to sh share your screen about the second coming price. Um, there, uh, is there a foreigner here? Oh. Yeah, uh, oh, I, have, I have one friend here, uh, Jan, uh, Jalil Nadap. Uh, he's okay. Nepal. Uh, Does he wish to ask some questions? Uh, he's, I think he's a Muslim. And uh, he's my uh, dishwasher before in Kuwait. Does he have a question? If not, please close the video so that it will not be seen in the series. Uh, please close the video if there is no question. Do you have a question, Brother Nadap? I have a question, Brother Francis. Yes, sir. Wait, wait, let's give way for the foreigner first. Do you have a question, Brother Nadap? Yes, sir. What's your because question, Because I'm Muslim. Brother? Yes, yes. Do you have any question about yeah. the coming of Christ and or... Isa, 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 Isa al Nase. Uh, when... Isa ke... Isa ke... Uh, yes. It's the for is all the everyone is the... Uh, like, uh, do... Yeah, continue Not your question. Nothing, this is a... Jalil, mm. uh, it's, it's Chef Francis. It's Chef, Chef, Chef Francis. Yes, sir, Chef, I understand. <laughs> yes, sir, I know. Uh, it's a uh, question for this one because uh, it's Muslim and uh, it's a uh, Christian. It's not uh, different. It's, I, I do the same, the same to same. It's not different. And Muslim and Christian. Yeah, it's the same. Christian and Muslim, same. Yeah, yeah. Okay, they also believe in the second coming of Christ. Uh, this is Christ. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, do you have any other Muslim. question? Do you have any other question? If there are no other question, uh, can I can I request you to uh, close your video? No, uh, the, the one that opening the video is Idiongo, Idiongo from uh, Africa. Idiongo. Yeah, brother, Hi. brother Idiongo, do you have any question on our topic? 
You, you can still close your video if you wish to ask a question. It will be preferable that way. Brother Idiongo, do you have any question? So if there's no question, let us proceed with our discussion. I think uh, um, you can, you can still ask questions even if, without sharing the video, okay? Yeah, I so, think Pastor Jerry have a question. Oh, uh, yes, I have a question. This is something a little different with your topic, but it's all it's also connected. Uh, in John 6, verse 62, Jesus said, "What? And if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before, I am just want to clarify uh, this verse according to our faith or stand. Because someone, uh, some views believe that Jesus Christ was eterna, uh, eternally existing and consciously existing before. Because uh, it says uh, where he was before. He yes, this is about the Godhead. Oh, so yes. that topic is about the Godhead. So, um, Jesus Christ was in the form of the Word of God in the past, his pre-existence. So, he was in the bosom of the Father as the Word. Uh, he was in the monogene within the Father. Now, when Jesus Christ was made flesh, the presence of God uh, uh, surrounded him. When he was glorified, resurrected, the presence of God did not just surround him. It passed through his bodies. Okay? It glorified his body. Now, where was he before? He was with God. He was in God, though not yet being manifested not yet conscious. So when he was manifested and he went up to the Father, he was originally from the Father. Christ said, for I proceeded out from the Father and will return to the Father. It doesn't mean a oneness uh, teaching of his body disappearing. No. It means his body is still there. Uh, he's sitting in the right hand of the Father, meaning he's sitting in the only throne of the Father, and he's mediating for our sins. His body is still there. His presence came down the form of the Holy Spirit. But he was there bodily, but he's also conscious. So he's still the Word of God right now. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And you can remove the that was the past tense, it becomes general. The word was always has always been with God, but it manifested in different times. That's why it's in the past tense. So when Christ comes back to the Father, when he ascends back, ascends back into heaven, when Christ ascends back to heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father, standing in the right hand of the Father, mediating for the sins of many. It's like the Logos was with the Father in the beginning. So so what if you see the Son of Man go back from whence he was before? From where he was before, it was in the presence of God that not being seen by man. Originally, don't, the people don't see the Logos, the Word, unless they have revelation. The whole world was patterned after it. But they met Jesus Christ. The disciples met Jesus Christ. Christ told them, I have to go. If I do not go, if I go, I will prepare a place for you. So there will be a time, Christ said, you will see me no more. But God will send another comforter. So when the, the, how people do not see him in the first place, so some other teachings believe he was conscious, previous, previously consciously existing, and then he's been seen as the angel of the Lord. But no, he has not been seen before because he was the word of God, in God. So he will disappear again in their sight when Christ ascends back to heaven. That is, so what if the, the Son of Man goes back to where he was before? 
when you will no longer see me anymore. Not because of his status that before uh, he is already flesh right now, but before he was not flesh. That's not the issue. The issue is from him, where he was before, where you do not see him before, but in the form of revelation, in the form of prophetic uh, types and shadows and parallels in the Old Testament. When Christ comes up, uh, comes back, uh, comes up to heaven, ascending up to heaven, so you can show him ascending up to heaven. Um, it's back to the stage again where they do not see Christ in the flesh. They could only see Christ by revelation and by his Holy Spirit. Of course, you do not see the Holy Spirit. You feel that Holy Spirit. You feel that anointing. The person of Jesus Christ would only be manifested by his followers, the church, the believer. So that is the answer, Bar Jerry. From where he was before, the time when they were they did not see him because he was still the unmanifested word, not yet made flesh in the person in his person. What was manifested was creation and the prophets. Hebrews chapter one, verse one. God, who at sundry times in diverse manners spake in time past by the prophets. So the prophets were the the closest Christophanies uh, that they could see. The angels, diverse manners. God uses angels. God uses pillars of fire, pillar of cloud. That that's a pattern of what Christ would be in the New Testament. So it was foreshadowing. The rock was Christ. It was foreshadowing. So Christ will come back to the, a, a position where the disciples would no longer see him in person. We could only see him by revelation of the word. So that is back to his original position. And one day, of course, he will reappear again in his second coming. So let me answer the Mount of Olives. Let us read the scripture. So I shared a while ago, the whole world will unite in thinking they're opposing alien force that's about to invade the earth. Their minds have been conditioned by these movies. Of course, the movies should, should make a hostile alien for it to sell. Uh, but alien enthusiasts also believe there are good forces and bad forces. They're equating angels as a extraterrestrial aliens. Now, in I said a while ago, the Mount of Olives will not be seen by all men. They could only see the light in the sky. And it's too numerous. Because the light in the sky is very numerous, they will think it's an alien invasion, like in the Independence Day. And today, if you look at amateur videos of UFOs, UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomena. There are not many of them, but there are lights in the sky, the Phoenix lights, the whatever, many other lights. So, uh, but in the time of Christ, they will be very numerous. And they will be seen as a hostile force. Because those that were about to annihilate each other uh, were possessed by the devil for war. That's written in Revelation chapter 16. Now let's open our Bible to Zechariah chapter 14. This is part of the verse requested. AJ requested a verse in Acts chapter 1 verse 6. Maybe we can read Acts chapter 1 verse 6 before we open Zechariah chapter 14. Christ went up to heaven from the Mount of Olives. He will come back down again to the Mount of Olives. Let's open our Bibles to, uh, before you share your screen, look for the Bible first. So when it's blown up, then you share your screen. Acts chapter 1. Can anyone read for us? Anyone there? Yes, Acts I will read. One. When they therefore, uh, Acts chapter 1 verse 6. When they therefore yeah. were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Seven. And he said unto them, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons 
which the Father hath put in his own power. Thank you. Continue. That, so the times and seasons represent the church ages. The in times and age, seasons represent the dispensations uh, until Christ comes back down. Okay, continue. In verse 8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So, when he was taken out of their sight, um, the angels who appear, two angels who appear, uh, typifying the two prophets. These two angels will explain to them he will come back down the same manner. Continue. The next verse, Brother Jerry. Next verse. Next verse is verse 10 of Acts 1. And when they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. 11, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as she have seen him go into the heaven. Abraham Francis, in addition with this verse, please also explain the symbolism of these two men in apparel. Okay, thank you. I, I already gave some explanation on the two men apparel. I said they represent the two prophets, the two uh, olive trees, the two witnesses in the future. But that's not our subject. I just gave you some bird's eye view. I have uh, audios and tapes of that, so I hope you can look for them, download them. Now let's talk about the part when the angels told the people, the crowd, that in the like manner you saw him went up, the like manner he will come down. It means to say, from where he left planet Earth, physically, that was in the Mount of Olives, he will go, go back down again in the Mount of Olives. And as we discussed last Sunday, uh, pre, uh, last week, um, Saturday for the United States, last week that uh, the rivers of living water from Eden will be restored and the mount, it will pass through the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives will cleave in half, will split in half. Now, Zechariah 14 narrates that it will split by an earthquake, of course, when the, the feet of the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, will touch down on that Mount of Olives. In, in Zechariah chapter 14, open your Bibles there. Um, in Zechariah chapter 14, uh, that's where it was said, his feet shall touch the Mount of Olives. Ezekiel 47 also will mention that. So let's read these two verses. Uh, Brother Jerry, please read Zechariah chapter 14. Start from verse 1. The first one will talk about some wars, skirmishes. Then it will talk about the second coming of Christ, somewhere in verse 8. So start from verse 1. Please read from verse 1, anyone? Zechariah 14. Verse 1, yes. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Verse 2 of Zechariah 14. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses refold, and the women ravish. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. In verse 4. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. 
The mount of olive shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall be moved toward the north, and half of it towards the south. Continue, continue. You're reading what I was explaining last week. And yes, no, we shall yes. flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yeah, ye, ye shall flee. Like as ye fled from before earthquake in the days of Uzziah, the king of Judah. And the Lord says, God, my God shall come, and all the saints you know, will be. I have a question to ask. Oh, Sorry, someone wish to ask a question. Uh, yeah, brother, o, question. Brother Al Idio? Is it Idio? Yes. Yes, uh, yes. You have any um, question? Yes, I'm an African man. Yes, I'm a Nigerian man, an African man. Please, I want to ask, when will Jesus Christ come? Because they have been preaching this message. Since, 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 I want to know, when will Jesus come? What will be the time? When is he coming? So your signal is this. Uh, if you can share the, the oh, okay, the, the timeline. Um, so that the, the signs of his coming... Let's go to the major ones. First, Israel will come back as a nation once again. It happened in 1948. The Jews will rebuild their temple. So it has not yet happened. Yeah. When the Jews rebuild their temple, there will be war. Not yet this Armageddon war. There will be commotion. So that, that will be close to the rapture for the church. The bride church that is perfected. Then, uh, please uh, show eternity to eternity, the tribulation period. Then there will be seven years. So the rapture will take place after Ezekiel 38, 39, then the peace covenant of all nations for a peace treaty. So if you look at the tribulation period, Brother JP, a tribulation period of the eternity to eternity. Brother JP, the TJ, anyone, do not leave your post. <laughs> eternity to eternity. Okay, eternity to eternity. Thank you, thank you. Okay, you look at this. This is the seven years tribulation period. Okay, so the first part, the initial part, there will be the rapture. Christ, second coming for the, his church. When will that be? Your sign will be the temple being rebuilt. Your sign, there will be a great war that will take place. Ezekiel 38 and 39, that war. That war, no one will miss that. But although not everyone knows prophecy, only those who knows prophecy and are ready and have done their part in their ministry in life, they will go up in the rapture secretly. No, others will not see them. Then there will come the tribulation period for seven years. After the seven years is up, after the seven years is up, then uh, then Jesus Christ will come back down. That's a 30-day extension from the seven years. You see Christ in that illustration, riding the white horse? That will be after seven years from the time of the last week of Daniel. That's the period of time. Oh, Barjeri, okay. You mentioned before about the Almadi of the Islam. So you please uh, add into your explanation about Almadi and Jesus Christ, a uh, parallel, something like that. The Muslims believe that Jesus Christ will return again. He is not, I don't think he's the Mahdi. The Mahdi is another Messiah. He's an earthly person. Or sometimes in the in the... In the commentaries of Muhammad, the hadith, uh, they say he will come from heavens. They say he will come from earth. But Jesus Christ will definitely come back to earth. There's a verse in Quran that blessed is the day. I use this to prove to them that Christ died. Blessed is the day that I was born. Blessed is the day I will die. Blessed is the day I will rise again. So the Muslims interpret 
Christ dying and rising up again, not on the cross, but in his second coming. He will live a life of a family, <laughs> married man, and die a natural death and rise again. So they put it far out in the future, which is ridiculous. <laughs> which is ridiculous. That's why you can, if you study apologetics against the Muslims, this is one of your pointers. I mentioned this when uh, Rashid visited our, our fellowship church in Manalite. After his debate, I, I explained that, and he tried to explain it also. Of course, I know his explanation already. Christ will be resurrected. Uh, could you show, show the uh, no, millennium, uh, JP David? Could you show the millennium in the eternity to eternity? In their interpretation, there will be a great smoke that will kill all people on earth. That's very similar to the tribulation. And there will be a peace and plenty, and there will, and Christ's second coming, uh, and their interpretation for him to live as a family man and die is in that, in that at the end of millennium, either in the millennium or at the end of the millennium. So that is the, the time period he returns and lives as a natural man on earth and dies and rise again, <laughs> just to fulfill the Quranic scripture. So, uh, okay, that's only an answer for the Mahdi. So let's talk about the Mahdi. The Mahdi is another person as a Messiah. Maybe it is very similar to the Antichrist. Okay, the Iranian president frequent, pre frequently uh, mentions the Mahdi uh, should come. So uh, he was uh, open to a conflict with the United States. <laughs> like the Japanese terrorists that killed many people in the subway, they wanted to usher in World War III artificially so that, the, 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 so that peace will come, so that the end of the world will come and, and the millennium will come. So here in the version of the Iranian president, not the present-day president, Ahmadinejad, if you know him. Ahmadinejad, the previous president, was expecting the coming of the Mahdi. Maybe it's in the time of Y2K, okay? So, uh, and he preached about it, and he wanted Iran to have some conflict so that the Mahdi would come. So that's the story of the Mahdi. Now, what is the what does the Hadith say about the Mahdi? He will come, either restore all order, very similar to the Antichrist, or he will fight, against the, the jail, the devil, alongside Jesus Christ. I, I saw that in some documentary films. Oh, that's as far as I, can, I know and I explain. And some of you can contribute later. Uh, let's give way to the question. So, uh, going back to what I was saying, Zechariah chapter 14. So I just answered, uh, Brother Idil, that uh, the, the coming of Christ on earth will be seven years after the rapture. After at the beginning, seven at the end of the last week of Daniel. So that's the timeline. Okay. Now let's go back to the Zechariah chapter 14. When his foot steps in the Mount of Olives, it will cleave in half. When it cleaves in half, it splits in half, waters from Jerusalem will pass through that split mountain and water the dry deserts of Arabia. That was the original river of. Eden that passed through Eden. Where is Eden? Eden is have, in the beginning. I have question, bro. Okay, please ask your question. Okay, Give your name ahead. first. What is your name? What is your name? Brother Geron. Okay, what is your question, brother? You you it? teach uh, society, in the second time of Christ, we may, may have a preacher to preach the gospel. I did not get the question. Uh, that there's a preacher for the gospel. Uh, you're the asking about coming, me. In the second coming, in the second coming, uh, of Christ. During the second coming of Christ, there will be no uh, more preachers, but they have been killed. But right now, there are preachers that talk about this. There are preachers that preach about this, although uh, not ma a majority will preach the details. The details are intricate. Uh, only the bride, predestinated bride, will try to 
uh, uh, strive to understand, to study this. But majority oh, okay, are okay. lukewarm. So there are preachers today, even during the tribulation, there are preachers about the second coming of Christ. But uh, during the coming of Christ, all those saints in left in the tribulation that have repented from their foolishness, they would have been martyred. They would have been martyred for the testimony of the word of God. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And there are many other verses. So uh, these martyrs will preach about the second coming of Christ, about the end time message, but their life, they will, in the tribulation period, their lives will be sacrificed for that. Today, we have lazy people who do not even talk about Christ when they meet together. They will surely be left behind. But there are a few that really want to talk about this. They will be part of the rapture. They, those who sacrifice their lives without not necessarily dying. There are certain parts of the globe that people are still mar being martyred. But majority part of the world today in, is in the, on their pale horse. Uh, not, the Christians are not being murdered right uh, everywhere yet. So they sacrifice their lives by their work in striving to spread the gospel by discipling others. By giving their lives in preaching the gospel from the shallow things to the deep things of God. They give their lives to study, to research to evangelize, to preach, to exhort, to help out in the church ministry, judge counseling ministry, adoption ministry. They say adoption, not the physical adoption, spiritual adoption. Because many children are spiritually orphans today. They're spiritual orphans because their parents would not train them in the ways of the Lord. So uh, uh, there are preachers today also of this second coming. So the illustration I'm using is also by Richard Gann. He speaks some details. But I have other details that he did not mention. Example, when Jesus Christ comes back, he will be viewed as an alien invasion because the world today is deceived by this alien extraterrestrial phenomenon. Bro, I have a question, bro. I have a question, bro. Yes, yes, yes. You... The Yung the Banyard will give into Gentiles. Sabi do sa Matthew 21 and 41. No, paano yun? What is your explanation here? There. I, I explained that a while ago. That was during the church ages. So, JP David, could you flash the church ages? The, during the church In the ages. Coming, In the second coming, bro. No, the second coming. The wicked uh, uh, workers will be killed. Will be killed. So the false. The banyan is... come the way, bro. The banyan come. Pang, ano, second coming. Well, he is the best in the second coming. The vineyard. The, banyan, the, way, oh. the, the second coming is the harvest. So the vineyard right now, the vineyard right now, the husbandman is still there. So we're still in the church ages. There are many false husbandmen and righteous husbandmen. The wicked husbandmen are the ministers who close the minds of the people from walking in further light. It is right now. How about the tribulation period? It can may very well be so, but I believe the churches will be thrown into disarray, even nominal denominational churches, during the tribulation period. So the perfect time of the vineyard is now. During the tribulation period, it's the vineyard, they will scatter. It will be loose stragglers. There will be no formal church that is workable because the whole world will be thrown into chaos during, during the tribulation period. So if you can show, uh, Brother J.P. David, that's the church ages you're seeing in the screen. The, could you show the tribulation period? During the tribulation period, it's very hard to have a formal church service. So what will happen to the church, maybe a few first few weeks inside the tribulation, they could still hold some services, but eventually they could not hold on because the whole world will be thrown into turmoil. Imagine there will be no water to drink. Everyone will be thrown to panic. They will be looting. That's why 
uh, the military force of the nations will be mobilized because the whole world is is losing control. There will be anarchy. The, you cannot hold church services then anymore. The vineyard is not the vi- uh, the vineyard is no longer as uh, the wicked or the righteous is no longer as usual as we have today. Right now, we still have the freedom. We still have the peace in our society that we can preach the gospel. During the time, the gospel will be coming from the two prophets and the 144,000. The foolish virgin could not even preach the gospel uh, correctly because they realized they have committed a mistake. They may be SDAs, LDS, they may be Catholics, they may be other Protestants, Pentecostals, anti-message believers. Those that are left behind, they, they are not knowledgeable in what's happening. The revelation from God will revert back from Israel. Israel coming from the two prophets, then from the 144,000, they will be the primary source of revelation during the time. The vineyard then will be Israel, mostly. How about the vineyard of the Gentiles? The Gentiles will be thrown into this array. They will just have to follow the Israelites. They will just have the faith of what they heard from the two prophets, and they will just have to be martyred to be saved. They have to just give their lives in testimony, and that's the mark, not the microchip. That's the mark how they will be apprehended. They will allow themselves to be apprehended. They will give their lives. They know they have to give their lives for their soul, their salvation. Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. Chapter verse 9 to 14. They washed their blood in the tribulation, the great tribulation. Okay, so uh, the blood of the Lamb. Let's continue on. Uh, I, say, I have a question. Okay, please ask your question. Give, you, give your name for no, the purpose. Good morning to all. So I have a question, Brother Francis. Okay. Uh, all we know that the basic occurrence or basic event or basic teaching of the apostle that the Father is in Jesus Christ. All we know that. Amen. And my question, Brother Francis, when Jesus Christ ascended to heaven, and we all know that in the earthly time that the God is in Christ. So how will you explain that the God commit him to himself? If Jesus, if God is in Christ, then God come come to Himself because Jesus Christ uh, going back to God and offer the the offering of sin for the sin. How will you explain that, Brother Francis? Even though the Father is dwelling in Jesus Christ, it doesn't mean the Father is only in Jesus Christ. The Father is in Jesus Christ for us to see the Father. But the Father is not just in Jesus Christ. The Father is in the whole universe. God feels the whole universe. But his manifestation is is in a chosen place uh, of worship, which is Jesus Christ. God's chosen place of worship is in Jesus Christ. So we should not go to any other to worship God, but through Jesus Christ. So when Jesus Christ went up to heaven, it's not one God going to another God, although Trinitarians could interpret it that way. It is the Son of God offering up Himself to God His Father in the eternal presence of the temple. So there is a pattern of the temple up in heaven. Christ went into the Holy of Holies. What you see, that what God commanded among the high priest and the ministering priest in the temple, it's a pattern of the heavens. Hebrews 9 said that there's a counterpart pattern in the heavens where in Christ offered up himself into the eternal spirit. Though the eternal spirit is within him, it's very similar to us. We know if we are sealed by the Holy Spirit, God dwells in us. Christ dwells in us. But why do Christ say pray to, for the Father in heaven above? Because the title of the Lord Father represents Respect to his awesome glory. uh, Father in heaven. Okay. The Lord's prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. 
Why, of course, Elisoriano used that to say, oh, the Father is only in heaven, he's not everywhere. No, that is a word for respect. When you call God your Father, you're acknowledging His creation. He created us, He created the whole world. So you look up to the heavens to acknowledge His size, His awesomeness. He's not just up in the clouds. He's not just in outer space. He surpasses. He surpasses the, the universe. So when you look up to the heavens, you're acknowledging His power. Malachi chapter 2, verse 10. Or chapter 3, verse 10. Have we not all one Father? Uh, the Father of spirits. Have not one God created us. So, uh, God, our creator, is called our father because he sired us. Of course, the Muslims are against the word father because he does not, he, they think when you call him father, he's like a human. No. God created family and humans as a type of the relationship between the creator and the created. You look up to the heavens, you call him the father in heaven, not because he's only one part of the section of heaven, but he's everywhere. And the heavens are greater than the earth, greater than the universe. Sorry, yes, the universe are the physical heaven. There are three heavens. The firmament, the clouds. The second heaven is outer space. The third heaven is the spiritual realm, the higher dimensional realm. And God is beyond that. He's even beyond the spiritual realm. How great and big our God is. That's why when you call him Father, you, uh, it doesn't mean he's just up there. He's in Christ. It, it means you recognize, you acknowledge his his greatness, His omnipotence, His omnipresence, and His omniscience. So, it's not one God going to another God, because when Christ went up to heaven, it is for a reference. Jerry asked that question, what if the Son of God goes back to where He was before? What was He before? Before He could not be seen, because He was just the Word. He could only be understood through the Word of God, through revelation. And when He came for a short while in person, then they beheld the Lord of glory in the flesh, he will, dis he will, I said in a little while, he will go away. He will no longer see me again. That's what he meant he, where, where he was before. He no longer see Christ because he was up in the heavens, the presence of God. Now, the presence of God on earth is the Holy Spirit. The presence of God in heaven, uh, in, the, the, in, in the presence of the mighty angels, the presence of God's courtyard, the temple, so in the, spirit, in, in the spirit realm, there is the heavens and there is the hell. Uh, the hell or the spirit realm of the dead. But I'm not going to describe it right now. That's for another topic unless you request it. Can I, can so, I follow up, Brother Francis? Yes, follow up question. So my follow up question is, uh, can you answer me categorical? Then my follow up question is, um, did God make a drama when the Bible says that He is in and dwelt to the Son that He goes back to Himself? Will you answer me categorical, yes or no? Did God make a drama that He goes back to Himself, yes or no? It's not a drama. When Christ prayed, it was not a drama. It was real. When Christ begged for his life, it was real. He really felt that. He was not acting out. But I'm going to mention Brother Branham because Brother Alan Madera and uh, Val Polanco quoted to me the drama. Oh, Brother Branham talked about the drama. There are two meanings of the drama when Brother Branham mentions that. First drama is the events that's taking place, emotional, emotionally uh, charged events. Second drama is acting out when he was explaining like a oneness. Acting out, 
I, I answered Brother Val. Of course, I could not answer Brother Alan because I am not talking to him anymore. Uh, when, when Christ was acting out, it was in the plan of God. And I told him, it was uh, when Val said about drama, quoted the Brother Prof, Brother Ham about drama, of course, he was saying it was God as a man. And I answered him, Brother Branham and, uh, also gave another explanation that God was in Christ. Mm -hmm. So the drama is God, it, when you smith smote the sun, when you worship the sun, with right understanding, you're worshiping God the Father. So the drama aspect of Brother Branham's wording means God through Christ looks like a drama, but in reality, let's talk about reality. When you, when people, when the Roman soldiers nailed him on the cross, the Roman soldiers uh, flogged him with a scourge, scourged him. They put the crown of thorns. The father felt, Patri Pashanisen, the father felt the pain that was done to his son because he is also in the body of his son. So the father felt the same pain. Although the father could, would not die, could not die. The father is immortal. Uh, God is immortal. The father is immortal. But he felt the pain of death in the son. He felt the pain of the son. Now, what is the relevance of that for us? God feels our pain. If we have the, his Holy Spirit within us, he, we are not alone. He is uh, walking in the sand. Well, there's one set, one pair of footsteps because God carried us. So God feels our pain. God felt the pain, what, what they've done to Christ. How you looked upon Christ, how he, he was ignored. He's knocking on the door. You're not just ignoring the Son of God. You're ignoring God also through the Son. That's, you can say that's drama because the Father can feel what the Son is feeling. Brother Oscar may not understand this, but... Um, it is empathy, uh, no uh, sharing the same uh, experience, not just sympathy. Empathy means you're putting yourself in their shoes. So God in man is like God becoming a man. That's, those are terminologies that could be rightfully understood. So I'm not going to go into more detail because this is about the Godhead. But I hope I've satisfied your Question. But Brother Francis, you did not answer my question. Your question is your, your question you was drama, right? to Jesus Christ. I am not asking about Jesus Christ. I am asking about God Himself, in which He dwelled to His Son and came to Himself mm -hmm. because God come back to God. But your answer it, is it goes to Jesus Christ. Brother, J Brother Eric, when Christ said, I will go back to where I was before, it was not God speaking, it was the Son. So it's not go God go going back to God, it was the Son going back to God. That's the simple answer. I've already explained that, or maybe I did not point this out a while ago. It was not God saying he will go, go back to God, it was the Son of God saying he will go back to God. That's the right understanding of the scriptures. That's the right hermeneutics to see. It was the son speaking, not the father. Uh, my third question, Brother Francis. So, um, when when Jesus Christ coming back to God, where is the father in him? It's not him or is in the throne? My, I, I explained this a while ago. The father is everywhere. The Father is everywhere. So going back to the Father is symbolical to the disciples that he will disappear. He will no longer be seen. Since we know the Father is everywhere, when Christ said he will go back to where he was before, he was before could not be seen. Uh, Romans 1, 17, 18, 19, 20 you can only understand God through his creation. 
So there's you need a revelation. So before the, the during the pre-existence of Christ, they could not see Christ, but Christ was being prophesied. He was foreshadowed. He was foretold about his coming. So when he came for a short time, for a short time on earth during his ministry, because only during his ministry would he be recognized. Almighty God, Counselor, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Would he be recognized, wonderful, uh, miracle worker? God in us, because God was in him. Then he will disappear. He will say, in a little while you will see me no longer, because I go to my Father. It means he will disappear. It doesn't mean the Father is one just in one some isolated place up into the heavens. No. It means Jesus Christ before was not seen. He was seen for a short while. Then he disappears. Then that is how what he's meant when he says he goes, goes back to his Father. He mentioned that an, another time. I proceeded forth from the Father and will return to my Father. So that under, the understanding of that scripture is he will no longer be seen. He will be become the Holy Ghost. He will, he will eventually come back down as the Holy Ghost. He will not be seen literally in the flesh until Titus 2.13, the coming of the great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, many oneness and Trinitarians quote that verse. But if with the right understanding, being seen, you don't see God, but when you see Jesus Christ, you see God. So he's coming back here on earth. He's going back up to heaven. It's about being seen. Titus 2.13, that appearing of the great God. How does God appear when he's a spirit? Through his son, the physical body of his son, the chosen place of worship. So when the physical son comes back, comes back down here on earth, then he will be seen by many. Every eye shall pierce him. Every eye, uh, every eye shall see him. Everyone that pierced him. So those that have seen God, the Son, have seen the Father. So the statement of him going up, go coming back down, is about being seen in person. Not the fact that the Father is some in some isolated place like that. So I hope uh, this is clear uh, to you. Brother Francis, uh, Brother Jerry, uh, stop reading in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 5. I just want to ask in verse 7, now if you allow to read me, if Brother Jerry allow me to read verse 6 and verse 7, so he yes, has please. a question of this matter. So yes. in verse 6, and it shall come to pass in that day, that the light shall not be clear nor dark. In verse 7, but it shall one, it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at the evening time it shall it shall be light. My question, Brother Francis, referring in verse 7, that one day um, Prophet Zechariah told in verse 7 that what what is one day in verse 7 nor night nor day but what is that day one event yes okay before i answer the actual event <coughs> i'm going to give the understanding of other end time message believers now you can read from brother branham quoted that there is even a song in the evening time there shall be light there shall be light in the evening time maybe you can search for that song okay <clears throat> for the message believers they apply it to brother Branham opening of the seals it's spiritual for them it's spiritual yes there's nothing wrong with that you look at the church ages there's darkness there's light darkness is trying to cover the light and there will be light in the darkness in the evening time there shall be light that is like Matthew 24 he will with a uh, uh, the light the lightning shineth from the east to the west now Spiritually, because there is spiritual darkness today, people just do not see. Families do not realize they are in darkness. They just see them healthy, uh, swimming in the pool, <laughs> having excursions, not talking about the Bible. It's all right. Uh, Sister Yed is still healthy. Okay? So, 
uh, we are in darkness, we just couldn't see the darkness. Unless God opens our eyes of revelation, unless you become very. So there's spiritual darkness first. So the explanation of the message of believers is correct, but that's for the spiritual aspect. Now let's talk about the actual aspect. Zechariah 14 is about the second coming of Christ here on earth. The second coming of Christ here on earth, there will be darkness. Revelation 16 mentions literal darkness. First darkness is the trumpet darkness, a third of the sun, a third of the day, like when Christ died. But eventually in the bowls of judgment or vials of judgment that was poured out, there will be 100% darkness. During the second coming of Christ, there will be a total blackout and they could only see Christ as the light. So the actual, the ultimate in the evening time there will be light is Christ coming back down. Not just by revelation which the bride already has received, but in actuality here on earth, when the sons of God will manifest themselves, Christ himself will appear, Titus 2.13, and he will be the only light. That's the question of Brother Sispo a while ago. How can the whole world behold him? Because the whole world will be blackened out. It will be a terrible time. While you're having earthquakes, the whole world is blacked out. There will be panic that they see the appearance of the Son of Man in heaven, glowing in brightness. And they will have fear because they have rejected him. Eventually, they will recognize First, they think it, think it was alien. Then they will realize it is Jesus Christ having his vengeance on those who did not obey his gospel. Second Thessalonians 1, 1 verse 8. So, where Francis can I ask question? He said, uh, mountains fall on us, hide us from the wrath of the land. Because the whole world will see him for 24 Perfect. hours. As the earth spins, Christ was lighted, has, is lightening up the, dark, the darkness. Okay, it's also a time, light in the darkness. Okay, Brother Ferdinand. Okay, how how can the, the people see Jesus Christ when he comes down to the Mount of Olives uh, in Zechariah 14? If, if the people are in the, the whole world, how, how can they see Jesus Christ during that time? Okay, this was question was asked a while ago by Brother Sispalakopa. I answered that already. I'm going to repeat the answer. The, 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 you are in Australia. Australia. You can see Jesus Christ in Israel. Well, let, let me answer that. I already answered that a while ago. You were not, maybe you were not there, so you have not heard it. So, in Zechariah 14, he, he, his foot stepping on the Mount of Olives is not being mentioned as being seen by all men. Him being seen, seen by all men is in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. Him being seen by all men is not yet his foot standing on the Mount of Olives. He was still up in the clouds, and while the armies of the world are training their ordinances against him, then the earthquake, the 24-hour earthquake, will get worse. It will start for 24 hours. So the, whole, the earth will spin for 24 hours. They're seeing that light in the heavens. So they're not seeing him stepping on the Mount of Olives. They're seeing him like an alien invasion because there are lights in the sky. Not just a singular light, not just a, a, a several light, but numerous, very numerous, that you will be fearful of your life if you don't have any revelation. And of course, those who did not obey the gospel, so, they will be fearful. So it, it is literal uh, for you. They will see Christ as a as as uh, a part of that great light that will shine in the darkness. Remember, the whole world will be plunged into darkness. It is literally the earth will experience this cataclysm. It has experienced it temporarily before when Mount Pinatubo erupted. I was in Manila, and suddenly there was darkness. It was nighttime. It was like nighttime. 
It is, that's just one volcano, okay? So, if an asteroid strikes the Earth, the clouds of dust that will cover the sunlight will ki kill all the di dinosaurs. How long was that? How long was that? So, in the tribul great tribul, the dreadful day of the Lord, all hell will break loose. Not just the devils possessing people, but not just the looters, the, not just Bar the, the, the or, mean, the, Bar but Francis nature Dion. itself, nature itself will, all volcanoes will, uh, mountains will thrown to the sea. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, proceed with your question. Uh, do you mean uh, uh, when you are in the Israel, when Jesus Christ are going down to uh, the, the Israel, then if you are in the America and Australia, you can you can see that, that a while ago I mentioned you missed this. The earth will turn for 24 hours. Turn the what? Earth. Rotate. <laughs> the earth rotates. So, so uh, Jesus Christ come, coming down, it's, it is gradual uh, going down? Yes, as, as isn't it when he went up, it was gradual? It's like and the twinkling of an eye, not that type. Even rapture is not the twinkling of an eye. When Christ rose up, he was rising up very slow. People are crying, people are pleading until he disappeared in the clouds. And so the period of time Christ will come back down the Mount of Olives. It will not be very sudden. It will be for all eyes to see. The earth will have rotated 24 hours. For, it was for all the world to see his second coming. So now, that's right. there, there is a question here by Sister Leticia. Okay. Um, did Jesus predict his ascension as he did predict his ascension as he as he predict his sufferings, death, and resurrection? Yes, he, he mentioned them all of all of them. But the disciples, maybe ADHD is universal, no? not just the Philippines. The disciples did not get it. <laughs> Another question notes. from Brother Dennis. Why did Christ take his disciple with him in his ascension to heaven? Maybe he's uh, mentioning about Acts 1. Why he did have to leave them, then take him captive in a patient for? It's not a single the disciples. Where in the Jesus Christ while ascending, how about the captives or the Old Testament saints? Is that at the same time they are going up in heaven? Oh, oh, young people, I hope you can search Google. He led captivity captive. If you've blown it up, then you can share the screen. Okay, uh, Christ leading captivity captive could not be seen, but they could not go before him. Yes. They could not uh, say, oh, you're too slow. I'm going to go before you. No, they don't have the power. The power of them going up to heaven also comes from Christ. So them ascending is in the spirit realm. As the Bible says, many have seen them, but not all have seen them. Okay? Many, some, some have heard thunder, some have heard voices. Not all men are same. But so, these captives of the Old Testament saints that Christ has liberated from hell, they were going up alongside Christ. But they could not be seen. Why, why you may ask, why will that God allow them all to be seen, not just partial, all. Because see, they will draw attention from Christ. Christ should be the main attention. So only some have seen. So they went up to God. Now, what the question of that is, why did Christ leave his other disciples that were still alive? Because the gospel has to be preached to all nations. Our Bible has to be written. For our sakes, the, uh, the fullness of the Gentiles. So, of course, those that were left, they have to begin the dispensation of the New Testament, the church age, where God will gather up a bride for his son. So, of course, someone has to do that. Greater things than these you, you will do when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Wait in the upper room. Wait for the power from on high. 
So yeah. that's why they have to be left. If ah, he took them immediately, who will bring the gospel to the world? So that's the answer, Brother Dennis. Okay. Uh, there's another question so that we may entertain all the questions of our brethren. Uh, will, uh, will we literally hear the sound of the trumpet before Christ descend? And if that is the, this trumpet is not a literal trumpet, what is the significance or the symbolizes of this? What symbolize of this trumpet? A warning. It represents warning. It represents a message. It represents an alarm, emergency Abraham. An alarm. It represents a gathering together. It 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 calls to your to your attention. The sounding of the trumpet calls to your attention. Like there's an important message, there's an important bulletin. Okay. So the trumpet represents those things. So, of course, we have a message. We have a warning. We have an event taking place. There's also an emergency event taking place in our church. Um, like the families being corrupted by the world. Uh, how, how we should train them to avoid uh, uh, to be spotless from the world. That is also a trumpet judgment. You evangelize, you recruit them. That's for our church, our families. And how about the tribulation period? Could you show uh, eternity to eternity, the tribulation period? So if you can show the tribulation period in eternity to eternity, the message of the two prophets are the trumpet judgments of the world. The the prof, the prof, the two prophets will give a judgment, a trumpet judgment, symbolically, spiritually, and it will happen immediately. It will become a certain sound for the whole unbelieving world. But for the believers, it's an uncertain sound for the unbelievers, make believers. For the true believers, it's a certain sound back there in the church ages. That's why they got the benefit. They will, will be the first ones to go out to exit before God judges this world. Okay, so uh, that is the meaning of the trumpet judgment. That is the meaning of the trumpet judgment. Thank you. I think we have a few minutes to go. Do you have any more other questions there? I think it's already answered. It's all okay. So let me play this music in a little while. And while it's playing, please give uh, give us some closing prayer. Do you do you have any invitation, Brother Francis? Uh, I would like to invite everyone of you after, in after our the prayer. Yes, 6.30 a.m. 6.30 yes, after the prayer. Give the announcement yeah. after the prayer after while the prayer. song is still being played. Okay. Please give us a closing prayer. Please give us a closing prayer. Brother Jerry. Lord, thank you once again for the blessed morning that you have given us. Your voice could not be heard. Question, O oh Lord, about ascension, the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we may this um, message enhance us, O oh Lord, make us, O oh Lord, um, true Berean in your word, O oh Lord, and guide us every time in our life, O oh Lord, and make our life, O oh Lord, clean uh, and holy in thy presence, O oh Lord, in thy face, O oh Lord. Thank you once again, O oh Lord, to the listener and to our brethren who help to uh, take this word to take this broadcast to give this broadcast, O oh Lord. 
in the air, O Lord, and we ask this, O Lord, that in the in next Sunday, may this broadcast uh, be uh, brought once again in the air, O Lord. Thank you, and bless us, O Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, announcements. We, sh we should give your announcements, readings. Uh, you can give your suggestions what we should topic in next Sunday. The next week. Suggestions. Someone cut the. Okay. Someone cut the song. Uh, maybe it will not be con finished. Okay, uh, give your announcement, Bar Jerry, Bar Eric, about our daily broadcasts. Yes, we have, uh, I'm inviting you, all of you, in our daily broadcast, 6.30 in the morning, Philippine time, and 6.30 p.m. AST to 7.30. That is a daily broadcast. It's also in English, in the end, end time, Kogyo End Time series. See you there. Thank you. For those who wish to ask questions, give your account so that they could ask you in Facebook. Wait for the song to finish before you smoke the song.
two of the Academy okay. of Sound Engineering SABC Studios mm -hmm. walkthrough. We ran out of time in part one, but here we go. Okay. So God bless you all. Brother Debcon, you may. Uh, I hope someone will download those video, those music videos so we can will no longer be interrupted. Okay. Uh, God bless you all. We're concluding our... Uh, our open forum, you may watch the recorded broadcast in Kogeo and Time Series. Please share them to your loved ones, your other timelines, and other giant groups. Uh, we're now signing off. We're reverting back to our regular Tagalog program.